Hi, it's Bill Berry here with an introduction to MySQL Basics. If you're just getting started with MySQL, you could probably use a couple of pointers in terms of what's in the UI and how to work around in it. So I'm going to cover a few basic things there. I'm assuming that you have installed it successfully. Uh, that might be another endeavor. Uh, easy often, sometimes ridiculous and hard, but hopefully you had a good experience with that and can get started. And I'll show you some things, including these topics. How do you start it? How do you start and stop the server in case you don't don't want that running all the time. It's kind of big. Uh, also, understanding what is there and what, how you can manipulate the panels that you see to get things out of the way. How to change and the font sizes so that you can have your editor bigger or smaller if you need that. And also some basics about creating scripts. So how do you use multiple SQL statements in a script and how can you save those files? And uh, if you're a student, you might need to submit those files. So it's good things to know. So that's what we're going to cover. So when you start MySQL, you're going to want to start the MySQL workbench. And when it first starts, it's going to look something like this, minus maybe some of the stuff that you see at the bottom. Uh, but you're going to see generally a kind of dark screen with some shortcuts on the right. And the thing that you're going to want to start is the local instance. You're not connecting to a remote SQL server probably. You want to connect to your local SQL server that you're starting. Now when you set this thing up you were expected to provide a root password. I hope you remember that. Uh, if you don't it can be kind of a nasty process to try to reclaim it. So hopefully you paid attention and you save that thing somewhere. So once you click on this you'll be asked to provide that root password and you have an option to save it in your vault so that you don't have to uh, worry about it again which is a great idea as long as you don't forget it in the long run so don't do that you'll regret it. So if you'll just click on this gray box here the local instance then it will actually connect to that server and you should see something that looks like this. Now a couple of things to note in terms of what you see on the screen very typically it looks like this. So what you see here at the left is a bunch of management and navigation options. The one thing that let's talk about before we forget it is if you look here under startup and shutdown, if you click that thing you have the option of stopping the server. That is a useful thing to know and then you can start it back up in the same way. Now when you reboot it's probably going to be set to automatically show or automatically start so you'll have to do this again but if you just needed to stop the server for some reason that's a good way to do it. Just click that button and that's it. So aside from that, really that's that's really the only thing that you're going to mostly need in the management area. So I'm going to go ahead and close that because I don't think we need that at the moment. And then the other thing is that this management paddle pretty much is just in the way. You probably don't need it. So an easy way to do that, to get rid of it, is to right here you'll see a little shrink button. And if you click that thing, you will see that now what you will find is your schemas and their schemas are all the database definitions that you have. And basically you'll be able to see all of those and if you look down here at the bottom you can switch back and forth between management and schemas because you sort of collapse that into one panel and you can use these little dividers to give yourself more room if you need to see more information about what's selected or more schemas. So that's one panel that's kind of useful. Uh, down at the bottom here you're going to see some uh, some output. We'll use that in just a minute. I'm going to get rid of this because I don't want you to be confused by what's here. Uh, but down here you're going to see some output. So when you uh, execute SQL statements you'll see some output that says something was accomplished, something succeeded, there was an error, etc. So that's going to be a useful little panel but I have it kind of made smaller because I don't really need it. Again you can use these dividers and you can make this smaller or larger if you need to have more or less area there. So I'm just going to leave a little of it showing. The other thing here is over at the right this SQL editions. Uh, I find that for beginners you're probably not going to use that and it's just in the way. One thing you might not notice as a UI that's useful is over here you have these options and by clicking these you notice right now you have a blue thing that says there's something at the right. If you click that it turns gray and the thing at the right goes away. Same with the output panel and same here with the navigation and those sorts of things. So you can turn off and on those whole panes by just clicking that and that's really useful stuff to know. Now you won't have all of these things. I have these tabs that are left over from other work that I do but you'll start with just a simple tab that looks like this and you'll have uh, just you know line numbers and this blank page where you can write SQL. So that's great. So that's sort of getting started and what you see and how to manage some important things in the UI. How to start and stop the server. So that's great. 
Uh, let's talk about fonts and sizes because sometimes you may find that this works fine. So I'm just going to type a comment so that you can see the font size that I'm talking about. This is my font size. All right, I'm going to do a slide that so I can stop the comment. So in this case, if you don't like how big the font is, you may want it smaller, you may want it larger, that's fine. The way that you do that is go to the Edit menu and choose Preferences. Under Preferences, you're going to choose Fonts and Colors. And then you'll notice here you have a font name like Consolas, and then you have a size like 12. So if you want everything to be a little bigger, then make all these numbers a little bit bigger. And you can control the editor, the result set, and some other things as well. Change those things, and then you will probably find, as I did, that you have to exit and come back in to see those actually working. You may be able to find some other trick, like you may be able to, to close the tab and then start the local instance and connect to the local instance again, and that might be enough, probably is. But that's how you uh, work on those things. And then there's an OK at the bottom, which you is just off the screen, so you can't quite see it. Let me move it in for you if I can. Will it let me? No. So, uh, but basically just say OK once you set those, exit and come back, and then you'll have your uh, font size set. So that tells a little bit about how to configure the thing and get stuff in and out of your way. Let's talk about uh, what happens when you have multiple SQL commands and then what can you do with those. So one thing to note is over here at the left, we'll look a lot more at the sample data, but this is data that's provided as samples with the uh, with the MySQL product if you install the sample. So there's this one, the schema called Sakila, that's one database, and then there's one called World, and then it has its own tables, etc. And you can go and look at all those. So one thing to note is if you want to make one of those the default, so whatever you type over here in your script area is automatically going to affect that, you simply double click it. So if I double click world, then I have that set as my default and anything I type is going to is going to affect that. So let me type some simple SQL. You don't have to understand what it all means, but let's type some super simple ones like select star from city. And then I type a semicolon. That's a complete SQL statement, so it ends with a semicolon. Now, um, let's type another one. Let's see if I do a select star from country. All right, so now I have two select statements. One's going to show all columns uh, and all rows from a table called city, and the other one's going to select all rows and all columns from a table called country. Those are two tables within world. So one of the things that you need to know is how to run one thing. If you want to run the thing that you click on, notice I just click so my insertion pointer is on that line. If I want to run that line, I click this icon here, which is the lightning bolt with the little IP, the insertion pointer icon in front of it. And if I click that, I see the results set here, and I can scroll up and down. So if I have lots of rows, I can use my mouse to scroll up and down, which works great. Uh, if there's lots of uh, columns, I can scroll left and right, which I don't have to do here. And you'll notice down here, you actually see that there were so many rows returned. So this is our output, right? It shows you these that the uh, output worked, that the execution worked, and it returned that many rows. So there's an awful lot of cities that are in the database. So that's useful. Now if I want to run this other one, I do the same thing. Click down here, and I want to execute that one, only the one that I'm clicking on. And here, you got a whole bunch of these guys, so you can scroll left and right to see them, and you can scroll up and down as well. And uh, you can also, yeah, I think that's all we need to do here. I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna worry about that. Let's go, uh, let's go up here and go back to the results grid. Okay, so uh, basically you have a lot of uh, a lot of data that pops out here, and we have two SQL commands within this file. Now, if I click this first icon, it will execute the entire script or whatever I have selected, right? So since I have no selection, it's going to run the whole script, which is going to first do this one and then do this one, which isn't particularly useful things to do one after another, but you get the idea. You can also have comments. We'll talk more about that later, but this uh, let's see all the city data. Data, right? You can put all your comments in here and that works fine too. Let's look at countries now. So all of this stuff that you have is not saved 
in a file. Now when you exit and come back you're going to still see this because MySQL kind of retains that work but if you're in a place where let's say you're at work or you're at school and you're not so sure when you come back everything's going to be completely safe it might be a good idea to save this stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say file save or I can click that little icon or I can do file and I can say save script or save script as since I don't haven't given it a name either one of those is going to work. So I'm going to say that and then I'll choose something on the desktop and I'll say getting started. It's going to put a .sql on the end of that. If I look on my desktop it's going to be sitting there and it is a text file. All right, so you can open it in notepad if you want to look. Now if I wanted to close that Right. I could at this point, even though you know I had some data in there, and now let's go open it. I can either go, uh, this is easy probably, open SQL script, and I go again, point to the desktop, say getting started, and say open, and there's all of my stuff. So anytime you're working on an assignment and you need to put this all together, or you're working on an extensive script that creates databases, inserts rows, etc., creates tables, uh, you can just put them all in this one file or break them up as you like, but all of it can be stored in this one script and it's all saved in one SQL file. Again, it's just a text file with lots of lines. So that gives you the basic information of how you get some stuff in here, how you work with very basic commands. We'll learn a lot more about that as we go in the course, uh, and how you can save and open these SQL files, these script files, in case you want to do that. So that brings us to the end of the presentation. So I hope that that's useful in getting started with MySQL. Brings us to the end. If you have any questions, do let me know. And I'll make some other videos to get you started with exploring databases, looking at tables, looking at data, looking at column definitions, and also looking at entity relationship diagrams or enhanced entity relationship diagrams and what we can learn from that because that's important. So stay tuned for other videos in this series. Thanks for watching.